Which would you rather see? A 10-year plan to land a man on Mars or a 10-year plan to get the beginning tether of a space elevator? Which would you rather see in 10 years? Just, I, I, I knew you were going to ask this, by the way, Brian. It's already prepared an answer. But I'll let <laughs> Justin, so, so by all means, since you're prepared, let the unprepared person go first. Of course, yes. So, so, uh, go, although, I mean, I was so I just, gracious. I, I wanted to give you a chance to talk. I didn't want to. Uh, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I would, I would probably say Mars. I mean, to me, like, you know, the uh, space elevator is, is, you know, a, a awesome, uh, you know, and, and, and potentially, you know, uh, amazing uh, breakthrough in terms of how we think about, you know, travel. But at the same time, I think, you know, Mars is in so many ways, culturally, uh, just, I mean, a, 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 in this fractured society where we all care about our own niches and we are, have so few communal experiences that, that can transcend not only, like, we're more connected, but yet we're more uh, scattered. A trip to Mars and a mission to Mars is immediately a, a, a worldwide binding event that everybody understands and everybody can get excited about. And, and so, yeah, I would say Mars just okay. for the symbolism. Now, before okay. before uh, before I because I do want to hear Andrews, but let me let me give the counterpoint because you say Mars. The thing is, is you could go to just Mars just once with this 10 year mission and maybe you've laid the groundwork. You can go back there a few times, but. If you build a space elevator, what is it? Was it Robert A. Heinlein who said that once you get out of Earth's gravity, you're halfway to anywhere in the solar system? And so it's like, would you rather get all the way to one planet once or would you rather get halfway to all the planets of the solar system and beyond? That's 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 why I say space elevator, because that is when all of a sudden you drop down the cost per pound to like ten dollars a pound. Then all of a sudden you're building the freaking enterprise. Now you're building like real giant space arcs that fly all around the galaxy. Um, all right. Here's my here's my my counterpoint to that, Bri. I love the space elevator. Absolutely love it. But to be talking about a space elevator within a 10-year time frame would be like trying to use Viking longboats to lay the transatlantic cable. It is – there is a technical hurdle. There's a lot of little technical hurdles and things like that that we need to solve before we can go as far as to build the space elevator. It will be a far easier technical achievement for us to go to Mars. There's no way we could conceivably be building a space elevator in 10 years, You know, maybe even let alone 20 years. Ten years from now, we could be going to Mars. We could be developing all sorts of life support systems. We need heavy lift rockets to build a space elevator. You know, we're going to need Falcon 10s and 20s and whatever comes after that because to build a space elevator, you need to put millions of millions of pounds of, into orbit to counterbalance it, and you're going to need a huge infrastructure. So I think that the Mars is sort of an – you know, I, I think that we, we'll get there faster by saying let's – you know, you know – the marginal utility of being able to get in to put things in orbit, go to Mars, and then it becomes a lot cheaper to build things and practical to do a space elevator. I, I can't decide if you cheated or not because the question was, which would you rather see, the first the first tether established for a space elevator in 10 years or or get, or get making it to Mars? And your answer was, yeah, there's no way that can happen in 10 years. So well, I'll say no, Mars. no, no, no. I well, think, I think and, and not to put words in Andrew's mouth, but he's saying that the 10-year down payment – on a space elevator does not get you near as far as a 10 year down payment for a mission to Mars. A 10 year down payment on a mission to Mars could get you to Mars. You know, I mean, this, Brian, if the question is what I, what I want to have a space elevator in 10 years or a Mars mission in 10 years, a space elevator. Absolutely. Well, I mean, absolutely. and I mean, I mean the beginning of a space elevator, because obviously you're looking at a very long term pro, uh, you know, project, but, but that will be the moment we remember is when the initial tether is when we have a direct line that goes from the earth into, uh, you know, zero gravity. I mean, that's, that's the magic moment that, that you'll remember. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to, to frame it as, as a, a, I, I don't know. It just seems to me. It just seems to me like, uh, if in ten years you, you got two moments that you could picture. One is you know uh, somebody's on Mars, and then the other is we've got this this gossamer thread up into the heavens. Uh, and then, but two years after that, all you do is you get your guys back from Mars. But two years after that, on a space elevator, you now have you know a a three quarters of an inch thick thing, and then you know and then it's a, a you know few feet wide. How and long? Then, how long do you see? How long do you see taking from the the tether to like we can start sending elevators up the space elevator? Twenty or thirty years. Uh, 
What? what? You think that's, that's too fast or too slow? I think it's, well, I mean, to me, it'd be like, uh, like well, what about Mars, guys? I mean, I, I, I like, look at our we elevators. We go to Mars now. Bigger. Dude, like this is, I mean, because you're like, oh, but, but that's just it. Mars, that's just it. And then we can just get him back in two years. That's you just know, it. That's huge. You go to, that's you go to Mars. Do you I mean, do you know what that does for our culture? Do you no, know what that it does, does nothing for, what, for our how culture? Think about space and, and where our money no. goes. Look, you go, you make, you you make a beer run to Mars. What do you got to show for it? Nothing. Yeah, you got some, I, you I, got I some know. stupid red rocks, and that's it. You make a space elevator. You change the course of mankind. For you all a time, space elevator. We're what? dead, waiting for it. We're waiting for so it. So what? I humanity gets it. My my grandchildren so wait, get wait, it. But like, you don't think that a a mission to Mars and and a continued focus of our uh, interest, resources, and money towards space exploration is helped by a mission to Mars? All right. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. You got you got a small village. And you say uh, we uh, we got we're gonna award two contracts, one to Brian and one to Justin and Andrew. And you guys, your job, Andrew, is yeah, what we're Jandrew. called. Thank you, to Jandrew Corp. Jandrew Corp, right? We'll Jandrusize your village. Exactly, right? No and time. it's like and it's like uh, you know, so start providing water to the village. And you two bastards, you grab two buckets and you run on down to Mars and you scoop up the water and you run back and you're like, here, that's thirty dollars a gallon. And you run back and you scoop up water again, whatever. Meanwhile, I'm looking long term and I sit down with an architect and some engineers and we lay. Out a pipeline a dehydration we it, we we lay out a pipeline and then all of a sudden you guys don't understand why you're not able to get thirty dollars a gallon for water anymore because I'm selling water for ten cents a gallon because I've constructed a pipeline that'll take you anywhere oh you want to go to Mars yeah no that'll be ten cents you want to go to Ganymede that's ten cents as well yeah, the whole right, universe you, is you, now available for you because I took a longer term view instead of going to planting a flag and picking up some red rocks okay so Brian you lay out your blueprints you go here it is guys like that's great first we need a rocket well of course of and course like oh you mean the rocket we used to put all the stuff we went into orbit we i didn't say rocket. i didn't say rocket? no rockets we'll rocket. who said yeah, who this said is no how, rockets? this is how rockets become i mean th this is part of the reason why rockets continue to uh you know proliferate and we and we have a priority on them because right, we here's have the thing. We no, do no, something here's, look. with the ones in between the ones that we need to build something like a space elevator. Right. But you guys are you guys are applying this in an inherently wasteful and useless way. Why don't you if I understand no, if so you going to rockets, Mars is useless. No, no, There's listen no to use me. We can possibly get out of going to Mars. Listen to me. If you want to go Dark to Mars, is building a house there. Right now, because he's really pissed off about how he's being treated on Earth. We can go visit that house. <laughs> Let Brian go. You get three tries. I start to talk three times, and then on the third one, I shut up. <laughs> this is awesome. Come on, Brian. Listen to me. So you can go to Mars if you can show the patience to wait 20 stupid more years and do it by way of a space elevator. Yes, you will use rockets, but instead of blowing $3 billion on a round-trip beer run to pick up red rocks, you can invest that to get a space elevator built. Then when a space elevator is built, you can go everywhere. You have a driver's license to the solar system, and everywhere you go is stupidly cheap. Why would you forsake all that opportunity to get a right-now beer run out of going to Mars? That's okay. what I don't understand. How is right. that better? Can I, I hear uh, all, all shouting and yelling aside, I think that ultimately what I am saying by way of, uh, uh, and, and I think part of Andrew's point is that the 10 year down payment on the space elevator is going to include a lot of technology that right now would be insufficient to start building that kind of project. But as the uh, evolution of something like these Falcon you know, 9, 10, whatever, you know, the, through the future rockets, uh, part of what justifies them being made is other kind of scientific explorations that could include a trip to Mars. So a 10 year down payment on a space elevator could very well. Yeah. I think we could be, we could be walking the same path because we I, need, I, these, we need future. I, we need the future of rockets. I, I think, I mean, I, uh, Brian, I absolutely agree. If you have to ask me, which is going to be the most significant thing for our species, a space elevator or landing on Mars, space elevator. Absolutely. It's a technical achievement. It's this, it is this, this exit point from Earth. 
Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. I do not deny that at all. So I, I concede that to you totally. My my thinking, though, and like, again, the part of me that tries to think about this, we talk about, but what's a wait for the saying 30 years out, et cetera, is a space elevator will be the most expensive, ambitious undertaking in the history of humanity. It's going to be, it is going to be the most expensive thing ever done. Ten years from now, a Mars mission is going to cost less than the Iraq war. You know, it's going to cost less than our Afghan expenditures and will probably net us a lot more than either of those things has gained us. So my my take on it is saying that it's I, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a both. And I think if we go for this one thing, that will actually bring that other thing there f- faster, because part of the reason this is happening, part of the reason there's a SpaceX is because Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. The guy wants I guarantee you the guy wants to retire on Mars and he's spending an incredible amount of time and money hundreds of millions of dollars on this effort, hundreds of millions of dollars of private capital on this effort because of that goal. And I guarantee you he would like to see a space elevator at some point, but this is a guy that probably, you know, Justin and I were joking that probably in 10 years' time, he's going to have his own probably private space station and he's going to be taking vacations up there. He's going to have his house in space. And this is a guy that probably wants to live on Mars at some point. And I think that that, that kind of carrot, although it may not have the same, the same sort of scientific or you know, engineering achievement that a space elevator certainly was for their motivation for these guys to go do it. There's a reason why Elon Musk is spending, you know, 40 hours a week on this, 40 hours a week on electric cars and stuff. And we sit around doing magic tricks because he's so driven by the idea of getting to Mars. Well, what have you done for your space elevator? Well, and and well, here here's the thing is we've already been through this. And if you talk to most uh, scientists uh, and in fact, Carl Sagan was a very outspoken opponent of putting people in space. He said, if what you want to do is explore the universe, you can send out 10 robots for the cost of one manned mission. It is silly for us to be sent. You know, there's so much wastefulness that you have to do in order to create a safe environment to send people up into space. And so uh, we, we, the space race was not driven by science. It was not driven by a desire to colonize, colonize the stars. It was driven by, by machismo and, and money. It was our, it was our surrogate war against Russia. Now we've are we've already been through it with the moon and and look at the opportunity cost of how much science didn't get done because we were too busy moving meat onto the moon because it was a sexy target that made a statement to to Russia. Uh, To me, you guys are just following into the same trap. Now it's a it's a different sexy target. Short sighted. I think that is very very uh, unkind to the tens of thousands of people who worked in the program, who were involved in it, who did, were not into this, were not these jingoistic puppets that you make them out to be. There are people who say that, you know, what science by itself has no value without there being humans to appreciate and understand it. The universe is a cold, hard place that has no love for us. Humans, you know, are, we give value, we assign value to do these things. And there are people, many, many people who worked on the program, but certainly was absolutely the money, the reason it got funded, all that came because of the Cold War, without a doubt. But the passion of the science and the engineers was not about, you know, beating the Russians. You know, it was about trying to do the greatest, you know, the new age of exploration. You know, since we found the new world in 1492, you know, the okay. idea of there being Just some an- new territory. An- answer to me go this. To. Answer me this. If, if you could go back in time and have the same budget that was spent on going to the moon and going to the moon seven times and then coming back mm-hmm. uh, and, and knowing now what you know, knowing then what you know now, would you have assigned the dollars the exact same way? You don't think we could have gotten way more by, by right, allocating, not going to the moon, but yeah, by picking a less sexy, but more important target, multiple I mean, space saying, stations. Would I spend the money on something other than the moon? Yeah. No, absolutely. I would have gone to the moon. Absolutely would have gone. And to it the moon. has to be people going to the moon. Absolutely has to be people going. I, to the moon. I think we could have achieved so much more, so much earlier, so much I, more that mattered. If we, if we look, I'm not, I'm not against people going to the stars. I want all the people to go to the stars, not just some lucky few billionaires or, or, or a handful of astronauts so that, so that we can all sit there and have an electric moment of watching television. I well, want well, everybody, Brian, I want it me... cheap and affordable, and there's no way that a mission to Mars is going to yield nearly as much. Like, like, to me, I, I honestly don't want to go to Mars until we have a space elevator. That's the well, only responsible well, way to do it. Boycott. Brian, here's my thing. Now, if you asked me if I felt the same way about the shuttle program, the answer would be no. The shuttle was a, the space shuttle program was an extremely wasteful program. 
You know, it was, you know, one of the most dangerous forms of space flight that ever existed. It was a, 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 a screw up in so many ways. But when I, when I, you know, when I look at things that we have, like there, I, I'm always skeptical of when we talk about indirect benefits, but we have a whole generation of people of computer scientists, et cetera, who are the children of people who worked in that program. When we created this thing, this first, not directly up until the time of the space program, the moonshot, if you are a scientist or an engineer, unless you're in a university, just about the only place you were going to work was going to be on military projects, war projects. This was one of the first, one of the biggest, this is the biggest expenditure in history for a civilian project, a civilian science-related project, an engineering project. And we, we talk a lot about science, but we ignore engineering, but engineering is what allows us to enjoy science. And that, that kind of frustrates me because I love Carl Sagan, but he's dismissive to engineering, which makes a lot of things possible. You know, engineering is how humans use this knowledge. And so my, my point to that is, is that it is, it is a dangerous game to get into and say, well, if we spend this, this will inspire people. I, I think outside of the moon shot, I can't think of anything else that really would have been as inspiring. But that's much my thing is I think that it was a for that time to be able to do that when we did was, you know, you know, the, just the mere fact that it wasn't just money spent on a war. Was a value. I, I will. I, listen, I'm dumb and I don't know near yes. as much All as right. either. Next of you guys. Oh, there's more. <laughs> um, but I think that there's so much to be said for momentum. And I think that uh, there is a, a value that I, I don't know if, I mean, if, if the goal is I will not go to Mars until I get a space elevator. I don't know if we get a space elevator until we go to Mars. I, I don't know if we look at, at that in terms of governmental priorities and political priorities and the kind of, uh, I mean, I've obviously thank uh, you know, I'm very thankful that we have people like Elon Musk that want to look, you know, into the future and say what is next for space travel. Because certainly the people that, uh, you know, had previously been charged in doing it uh, had not been doing a fantastic job through NASA. Um, you know that uh, you don't get that kind of momentum unless we start moving in one direction. It might not be in the perfect direction, but it is in a direction of next the next generation of space exploration. And I, I can appreciate that. I and, and from a practical standpoint, I think probably both of you are right. It's the only way it's going to happen. That doesn't mean it's the right way or the most efficient way. It makes me sad that everyone's going to think that and there, there will never be an opportunity to know how much money we could have saved by moving on focusing on what would have opened up the entire solar system to us all at once. Yeah, so you're saying that what we needed was a very centralized economic planning project. The exact to, reverse of that. Don't you dare even go down there. I don't. I don't know how else you get your space elevator. Can I tell you my my the, the best reaction I think to this was from your daughter Penny when we were at uh when we were at Universal Studios for Islands of Adventure and we're sitting there. Uh, Bonnie was there and, and somebody made the comment talking about how the space shuttle that was going to be the end of man's space the yeah, you guys were going to go see one of the last space shuttle yeah. launches and somebody mentioned that was going to be the end of space flight you know for a while and then Penny Penny cried oh well if it was somebody that said something that made Penny cry that must have been that was probably you that said that then I'm betting I don't think I I, I made her feel better cause oh, I oh, her. oh that's right okay well because I do remember you made her cry. what was it that you said that made her cry uh, there was something ah oh, crap I forgot damn it Brian, your uh, dad's Brian, dead Brian, <laughs> Brian's really your father you're not adopted it was, so anyhow, she, when somebody mentioned came up the idea said that you know oh, you know that's gonna be the last space flight that's gonna be it she started crying and I'm like oh no no don't worry they have SpaceX there are other rockets coming there's other rockets coming that's awesome you know, I'd love I'd love to try to tell her about the elevator what? Uh, I, in fact, I bought a book on the space elevator. I'm teaching her all this stuff. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I read it to her every night. Yeah. <laughs> puppy book? No. She uh, so, she she loves uh, she loves. Okay, uh, yeah. You, you can go ahead and read the puppy book when you can get it in space on the space <laughs> elevator. I'm gonna put it in space and you can get it then. Uh, she she absolutely loved and and I know it's not time for our picks, but uh, remind me later. And one of my picks will be Daniel Loxton's book on evolution because she loved that book. Excellent. 